Well, good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, even though I don't have anybody on the call uh, tonight, I still want to uh, continue this six weeks to success. If you're not able to get on another time, we'll just ask you to um, join us for the next round of six weeks to success. Um, but I will have this recorded for anybody who can get back on um, later on. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And we'll go here. So welcome to uh, week three of Six Weeks to Success. And I'm uh, hoping that this is helpful. I'm hoping you're getting a chance to listen to the audio calls. I haven't heard anything back on that yet. Um, it is very important that you do listen to those because there's so much more information that we can do in a half hour's time here. Um, plus, I would really uh, prefer the follow-up calls with myself uh, later in the week, by the end of the week as well. Um, tonight we're going <clears> to <throat> talk, and I do, I do thank um, those of you who shared for, uh, to Lori and to Nadine to share what you did this week. I know uh, Nadine's made some contacts. She has a fundraiser going on. Lori has some other uh, shows in the works, and she's uh, wrapping up a show as well. And uh, we're going to talk about host coaching tonight. Um, but first of all, let's go back to what you've learned so far. So far, you've learned that you've got to increase your product knowledge in order to maximize your sales and your bookings. If you don't know about your products, um, how else are you going to share all the wonderful features and benefits um, to those that you come in contact with? You've also learned that your belief decides what you believe you can and cannot do, and that your brain can be retrained. And believe me, I'm an avid believer of that, that your brain can be retrained. Anytime you start thinking of negative thoughts, you've got to just change the story and turn it around and go for the positive. When you've got um, great expectations, great things will happen. You've also learned how to talk to people out and about and how to book parties at your shows and words to say at both. Um, at least I hope you have. Uh, you've learned that your passion shines through and completely influence purchases and bookings at parties. And there's so much truth in that. Uh, when you're excited and passionate about something, those around you can't help but get excited and passionate about the same things. <clears throat> Today we're going to discuss one of my favorite, favorite topics, host coaching. And with host coaching, this is working smarter, not harder. If you're going to have a show, you may as well make it the best show possible. Host coaching is where you earn your paycheck, and at the show is where you pick it up. <clears throat> so how do I coach my hosts effectively? I'm so glad you asked. Great question. Uh, first of all, um, you start at the party. Don't worry about the, the line or the time. Coach them then. Whenever you book that party at your party, you begin your host coaching. Always have host packets with you at your, at your uh, cooking shows. I generally give them three catalogs. When I first started out, I gave them two. But now I give them three. I have two for getting orders and one for them to wish all over with a black Sharpie. They can you said that's their own personal catalog that they can keep track of the items they want and the items that they purchased. <clears throat> I actually put a sticker on mine that says host copy, but you can always just put the host's name on it, write it on it with a Sharpie yourself and just say, this is for you to uh, fill out, uh, make your wish list. Um, then there is a fridge reminder sheet. And I do have these things in our power power, um, our Howard Shared Notebook on Evernote. But, um, we're going to go to that. But, um, you can fill out their fridge reminder sheet right then and there with them. Explain how important each step is and when to do it. And tell them that 40 invited means 20 say yes, means 15 shows up, and just go for 10 outside orders from the 25 who didn't show up. That's going to be a $1,000 show pretty much 99% of the time. If it's not, I'd be very, very surprised. But generally... Um, that's going to give you a thousand dollar show. <clears throat> and here is um, uh, a fridge reminder. 
and this is something you can give your give your host an idea or show. Um, or there are postcards too that can be made up that gives um, tells them what you want them to do and when. But you can't stress enough that they invite forty. Um, and you know what? And generally with forty, you're only going to have maybe ten to fifteen. Really, honestly, there. Uh, a, th a third to a quarter can come at any given night. So um, this is what you want to make sure you stress to your host to invite beyond, you know, they, they invite 16, they invite 10, they think 10 people are going to show up. It doesn't work that way because you're never going to find a perfect night for everybody to come. But it basically gives them a list of things that they need to do uh, from the very beginning. And I will tell you too that there's an email on the host coaching, uh, on the, when you set up a show in Pampered Chef, there's an email to send to your host. It kind of gives them these guidelines too, but I've been doing this for so many years. Um, I am trying to get back to what exactly Pampered Chef has to offer us because they've really simplified things. And I don't want to make your job harder and I don't want to make my job harder. So I will say, um, <clears throat> I will say uh, to, um, you don't necessarily have to have this, but uh, create. They want to create their own account on Pampered Chef's website using their email. You're going to send them an e email from the website. It's going to tell them what they need to do as far as setting up. Um, um, let them let them know you're going to create invitations for them. Hang on, just a second. I knocked at my door. I'm at. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Good night. I did say good night to you already. Right. Take time. Done with the bed bugs bite. Okay. Love you. Yeah. Colting my youngest grandson. <laughs> Off to bed he goes. Okay. Um. And then you're going to let them know the different things you're going to do. Um, this kind of gives you a timeline of everything. Um, basically, to, to uh, get them the guests first, uh, ways to invite through Facebook. Facebook is basically a way to keep people excited. I don't really like using it for an invitation. And if you find a host that only wants to use Facebook, I recommend that you just let them know right then and there. You know, if all you want to do is Facebook, I'll find another consultant for you because I find that Facebook just doesn't work um, as far as invitations go. Uh, you can you need to either email, text, um, you send personal messages, but uh, those things work much better. Um, but anyway, this is a list of things to do, um, and then let them know when they two days before the show to do their shopping. Um, let them know that they pick up, they, they should uh, shop for the ingredients. Um, they send a reminder out to their friends two to three days prior to the show. They want to send you a list of exactly how many are coming. And then I always put the closing date down. I always let them know we want to close within 24 to 48 hours of their, the day of their party for cooking shows. As far as catalog shows go, you want to do generally give them about two weeks. That's generally long enough. Ten days to two weeks, and that should be it. <clears throat> but communication is the most important thing for um, for your parties. Whenever, for the most part, whenever you have a poor party, it's the hosts. They end up canceling because you haven't communicated with them. And the host's biggest problem and the biggest issue is that they do not know exactly what they're supposed to do. It's up to us to communicate to them what we need to do. <clears throat> I've got a conference thing going on, okay? Love you. Yes. Okay. Enjoy. Hey, sorry about that. What's that? Okay. Anyway, when you do, when you have great communication with your host, they're not going to cancel on you. Host 
host coaching, developing a good host coaching system is the difference between a mediocre show and a fantastic show. Your hosts have to have a clear and concise path to follow the entire to follow the entire party's key to thousand dollar shows. We will call this working smarter, not harder. Would you rather go to a three hundred dollar party or a thousand dollar party? One you're going to make sixty bucks. The other one you're going to make two hundred and twenty dollars. Tell me, which show would you rather do? Me, I'd rather have a thousand dollar show. You'd be crazy not to want a thousand dollar show. And believe me, you can have thousand dollar shows with catalog shows as well. You want to coach your host. You want to coach your catalog shows just as well as you would coach your cooking shows. And that's the reason too that a lot of catalog shows are low because we don't coach. We tend not to coach those catalog show hosts as well as we do our cooking show hosts. <clears throat> Tell me, if you were blindfolded, could you make a basket from the foul line playing basketball? Now, Shaq could probably do it, and that's a whole different training. But could you? It's not impossible. It could happen. But what's the likelihood of it happening? Now, what if I told you Shaq would take the ball out of your blindfolded hands and take it to the hoop? What's the likelihood of you making the basket now? Shaq is an experienced basketball player who practiced and practiced and practiced and perfected his art. It doesn't hurt that he's seven foot one and the goal is only 10 feet. But that's Shaq using his God-given talent to the best of his abilities, which is exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. Take the ball from your host's hands and help her slam dunk that thing. So here's your must-do host coaching list. Contact your hosts weekly through various forms. I email hosts nearly every week. I also send texts to them. Um, <clears throat> you want to email them the next steps for the party. So I email them thanking them for having host having a party, I emailing them, letting them know that we want to um, go for 40 to be invited, 40 or more. I email them to let them know when it's time to be gathering outside orders, time to set out the invitations, um, reminders, everything. So I post our Facebook parties, which means we're Facebook friends, every single day, a recipe, a video tip or something. And um, I use Post My Party, or um, you can use Post My Party or Shits and Share. There's also something called Hoot Suite. But I just post, um, you know, when I'm riding in the car, you know, well, I don't do it when I'm riding in the car. Sorry about that. I used to whenever students look with me, but I can't do it anymore. But if I'm waiting on a kid, one of the kids, or I'm um, have, at an appointment in the doctor's room, I can send them personal messages. I text them. I befriend them. People don't cancel on people they like. I make them each an invitation, a textable invitation that they can forward. They can forward it via email, text. They can post it to their Facebook walls. Um, and then I also set them up on my website for inviting and ordering. It has, the, it has the instructions in the first email you send out to your host. Now that email that you send out to your hosts from your website, you can edit any way you wish. So um, it has about getting the names from them for sending invitations, but if you're not one to send invitations, uh, you can change all that. But I give them their direct link for the party with them in that host email. Um, I also make sure they understand that 40 plus 20 plus 15 plus 10 rule. This will always work, like always. Give them the words to say to invite, give them the words to say to remind, give them the words to say if someone says no. Like, um, Oh, well, if that's okay, I'm sorry you can't make it, but did you know you can still place an order? Um, there's a link in the email that I'll send you that you can just place an order online. People will usually have lists of things that they'd like to get, and even if they can't attend the party, they can still order. I also tell my host, you know, to uh, ask the, the person that they're inviting if they can't order, that they can still have their own party and get stuff for free. I pick delicious recipes to demo at their shows and I ask them to post the recipe choice they've picked on their party. I then post a picture of it because of course, you know, you're practicing your recipes at home, you can have a great picture of it. You can also get great pictures of it off Pamper Chef's website. Um, and include the recipe list needed in that post and tell them how scrumptious it is. Make a reminder text picture for them too to send out two or three days before the party. You can do this on Red Stamp. It's a great app that you can use on um, iPhones, Androids. Um, you can even do it on the computer. But uh, Red Stamp, it, 
has sort of basic generic um, invitations that you can just put a picture in and say what you want to say and send it to your host. And you'll absolutely love it. When, once you get a template, you can always just keep just changing it for each and every host. And you can do the same thing for your catalog host. I do. I make a, a textable invite for catalog hosts as well to send out to people via text or email. Um, and encouraging them to use the online link for the party as well. Now, when I make my online link, um, it's under the show, next to show info is a show page tab. You scroll down, it has the invitation to send the people um, from there. But there's also a link, and it's a bunch of letters and numbers. I always change that to uh, the host's first name and the date of the party. So you can, if it's for a cooking a book show, I would make it like it's um, Julie's October book party. And I usually just abbreviate OCT instead of, and I, um, or if it's for a show, I'll do uh, Peggy's November one party. And then um, that's a great link for them to remember. I'll, I'll mail a catalog to anywhere to anyone, but I encourage them to use the online link for the party as well. So I'll go over their host benefits before I leave the party and give them a couple of days to close the show out too. So these are things, ways that you can host coach. So what do you say in your weekly communications? Did you get your packet in the mail if you mailed it? Um, did I have their information correct on the on the email invitations and the textable invitations that I sent? How many invitations were they able to hand out? Has anyone said no yet? Did you ask them for outside orders? Did you see that when you have 25 confirmed guests, I'll bring recipe ingredients? And you know what, if you offer that, they'll work so hard on, um, they'll work so hard on uh, getting those 25 that they'll get the 15 there that you want, and then you'll never have to buy the ingredients. But you want them to work towards a goal. That's the key. Set goals before your hosts, just like you set before yourself. I also ask how the outside orders are coming along. I actually coach them to that we want to have 215 outside orders prior to the party. And I offer an incentive, you know, something like a stoneware toaster oven pan or microwave egg cooker. Um, stone and I always purchase that at the host discount because if you start off with a $250 party for a cooking show you're already going to party before you walk in the door and that's a great feeling then you can concentrate on sharing the benefits of being a consultant and you can definitely work on getting more bookings you don't have to concentrate on sales to the paper chefs items sell themselves so you ask them how the outside orders are coming what are they most excited to get for free and who's coming and who could use a little extra cash in their wallets Ever thought about doing what I do? Those are all things you can email, text, talk to, leave voicemails. Um, and I do the same thing in different avenues. I do some through email, some through text, and it's always to make sure they get the message. Now there's different methods of host coaching, but honestly, Pamper Check has great resources for host coaching, so you don't have to reinvent anything. If you go to um, leadership and training uh, tab and go down to PC University and getting started, when you go down, uh, scroll down to the bottom, there is a course on host coaching. And you can just, it, tell, it gives you words to say and you can just copy and paste an email. Like if I leave a voicemail, I also send out an email that reiterates what I left on the voicemail. And you can just copy and paste and change the name um, from all of the documents online there. The most important thing is to remember to contact your host weekly. This keeps her on track and ensures that you have a great party going on. I love seeing all the yeses on Facebook and I know when to make sure I follow up with each host to find out when the yeses will start happening. Now, how do I track everything? That's a good question too. Um, for tracking, I actually use Evernote, and I do have this in the Howard uh, shared uh, files. There is a catalog template for um, there's a catalog template for um, host coaching, and there's also a um, cooking show template. Uh, 
for everything. But if you go to uh, Pampered Chef's website too for the, under host coaching, any resources, there is a host tracker. If you're somebody who wants to do things visually, um, you can actually print out that host tracker and it, you can keep track of everything on there. Another way to do it is when you set up a show, if you use a, if you use a calendar, you can put down every time you um, email or text or when you hear back or Facebook. So when I set up a show, I send out the first email. I mark E1 on their on their spot on the calendar. So you and then you can see you know when they read it. When I send them a Facebook friend request, I put FBR for Facebook friend request. When they say yes, I cross it out. When I send their packet, I put it put an X. When they get their packet, I circle it. When I text them, I put a T. When they text me back, I circle it. When their Facebook event has been set up, I set up their Facebook events because it's post my party. Um, it's important to set up the event yourself just to ensure that the posts happen. Sometimes when the hosts, and I've only had it once or twice, when the host set it up, it doesn't get posted. And I don't know why. It's like, I think uh, Postbook Party has improved upon that. Uh, but whenever the Facebook um, has been set up, I put, the, you know, I've got the banner, I put the description of the party and all that, and the date and time. I then invite the host, and I make her a co-host. When she joins the party, she can then invite all of her friends. So, um, and when they pick a recipe, I write it down. Like I said, I do, I do most of this in my Evernote, but you can always do this in the calendar. Whatever works best for you. Um, when they're interested in consulting, I put a C. Every email I send, an E. They respond, I circle it. So then I give them a moment I can see on my calendar or in my Evernote file who's on it, who's not, who I can count on having that $1,000 show for me. Who and who needs more encouragement. And I will say the tracker form that Pamper Chef has is wonderful. So I actually recommend just don't reinvent anything if, you don't, if you're not going to get into Evernote, which I love. <laughs> Um, then you can just uh, keep track of it on paper chess thing. So host coaching is a partner partnership. Uh, she's going to get a ton of free half price and discounted items and you're going to get a paycheck. Is that worth it to you for that $20 paycheck for one night? I'd say it is. So this week's focus is the skill. There's four pillars of success. Your host coaching is virtually a skill. Skills are one of the easiest pillars in a business because it's the one everyone can fix anytime they need to simply, they need to simply by using their tools at home, de developing personal stories about items, studying the catalog, carrying it with you all the time, watch and listen to home office and my trainings, come to team meetings, new consultant trainings, recipe nights, take, take my classes, go to conference, listen to tips from the top, to the Wednesday nights they offer them. They do that the first Wednesday of every month right now. Read books on selling. Direct sales for dummies is a good one. Watch YouTube trainings. There's tons of YouTube trainings. Do lots of shows. You'll get better with every party. Skills are easily taught and easily caught. You can do it. Believe me. Um, like I said, with the catalog coaching, uh, it's the same thing. You want to coach them for numbers of orders. Just like you coach for numbers of people at the party, you coach for numbers of orders. Um, there's those lists of top 40 people to ask. We call it the Frank's list. Friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and um, people you know for your kids. And then you can turn around and you can be relatives of friends, friends of neighbors. You know, there's just tons of different ways to invite. So homework for the week is to listen to the host coaching with Lisa Noto and Michael Yokely. Um, it's under PC University, under host coaching and peer sharing. And then I want you to share with me five takeaways that you have that you take away from that. And if you have not listened to the previous audios, please, please do so because they are absolutely awesome. And they're going to give you so much more than we can do in this, in this 30 minute, half hour, 30 minute uh, training. So um, with that, um, I want to know too, how many shows will you commit to booking this week? How many, contacts do you plan to make this week? How many host coaching calls will you commit to this week with those shows that you already got set up? Set a follow-up call with me later in the week to discuss this. Um, how many leads you get? How many bookings you got? What were your sales? What did you have trouble with? And a brag. You've got to have a brag every week. I'm sure you do. But definitely, definitely listen to that call 
uh, with um, Lisa Noto and Michael Yokely, two of our top salespeople in the company. And um, I think you're going to love what you learned there. So again, I thank you for being here tonight. Um, post on Facebook what you've learned. Um, email me um, to text me, whatever, whatever works best for you. So with that, I'll say have a good night and hope to talk to you soon.